Sir Alex. There's not really enough bad things to say about United. I know you're going to say all of them, but. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, start. Be here. I'll go. You Let's done, get this started. Yeah, I mean, Ronaldo should have gotten I'm gonna sh- off, I'm going to shout out I agree. Liverpool. I feel like they never hit fourth gear or whatever. They never hit a... You're that Connor. He's nev- being a nice guy. He's just being They nice never hit 100%, player. and that's par- partially due to the fact that United were so bad on that day. Um, defensively, no leadership, no organization. Um, <laughs> they were overloading sides. That's where... There's... Davis can attest to this. There's three goals that were not good Liver- good Liverpool goals. They were poor defensive goals where a lot of our players were overloading one side. People weren't tracking back. And you leave Salah, you leave Keita open. The first Keita goal was was one of those reasons why ball gets played through. It's 1v1. It's man versus goal. Goalie. Boom. Plays it, plays it neatly behind, the, behind him. So... Yeah, it, it, poor defensive marking, poor leadership in the back, and poor management from Ole. Um, you just see him with his arms crossed. You see, don't see him talking to his players. My brother sent me a video today. <laughs> there's a video. I don't know how accurate this is, but there's a video of Ole talking to Cavani about what he wants from him in a four four two because we reverted to a four four two, and then Cavani's confused because we lost a man at that point with Pogba, and then so. Um, Ole asked someone to translate, and then Ole like forgot that we like lost Pasta man. So we can't play a Cavani played in the midfield. Yeah, but yeah. he he did not realize like Ole didn't even know. And I'm not trying to show Ole too much, but I'm just saying like this is these are all the factors as, as to why we were losing in terms of poor management, poor poor um, player performance. So people are gonna blame Ole all they want, but the players are held accountable. Like there was no sense of uh fight uh urgency so it was sloppy loss of concentration a lot of the time when we were on the ball we were so poor like it was uh, no creativity everybody on the pitch that, that day was horrible i, I yeah. felt felt for deha deha was probably the best player because he just had to deal with shit all day yeah and he he had people a friend he had 10 people in front of him that could not defend <laughs> Yeah, it's like you could blame Ole, but you can't teach that bad. Yeah, defending. you can't teach that bad. <laughs> and yeah, partially, that's what I'm saying. Part of it's on the training ground. They work. You have to work on defensive play in the training ground. You have your coaching staff for a reason. Each coaching coach works on each aspect of the field, or they should at least. So yeah, it, atrocious. I don't want to get too into it. I talked a lot of it on the pod when we lost. When well, you, so you mentioned Ole was not great. You mentioned defensively they were really bad. Other side of the pitch. I mean, I think one of the craziest things to me was how fortunate Ronaldo was to not have been sent off on this game, too. I mean, I, watching the replay, the more and more I see it, I'm like, this guy, I mean, that that's that's red all day long. But, I mean, in general, he had a great finish. The ball ended up getting called off sides. Well, that, was, was that was the best goal of the game. Yeah, was, that mean, was the best goal yeah. of the game. If you legitimately really, took out what like how that goal happened... That was the it best. Wasn't like, it was just best moment of individual oh, talent. Oh, oh, oh. But, 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 the best but, 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 United goal. But, the best individual. No, no, that, that was no. that was the nicest goal of the game. No, yeah. but no, listen. No, let me, Hendo let, to Salah was the best. Let goal me of the let game. me speak. Let me speak. That's a world class pass. And let, let me speak. Finish. Let me finish. I'm saying it doesn't mean that that's what you want from your team. You don't want to. Re- you want a Liverpool goal. You don't want a player as talented as Ronaldo is being the sole. The deciding factor for a game. He bailed us out at Atlanta, and he's the only person that had a lick of a goal against Liverpool. So it it all draws into the fact that like our team is not a cohesive unit with a tactic that is going to work for us to win trophies or win a league. And I'm going to get into Ole now. Yes, I think Ole is needs to leave now, and that's partially due to the fact not only because we lost five to Liverpool, it's because for the entire day yesterday there was not a word from the club. And there was just rumors circulating, and when when there's not a word from a club with rumors circulating, you know the club is making decisions, but like in the back room, like this is we need to go in a direction. People are talking. People are talking, and there's stuff going on. Um, and Conte's are being contacted. Exactly, Conte. Con, so my my biggest thing is once you've init, once people have found out you've initiated contact with another manager, there's no point in being like, okay, we're going to give Ole three games and see if he succeeds or not. Because That's what then, it was, right? They're like, we want to give him the weekend versus Spurs. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think clapped. it's, I heard it's three games that could be like, I don't know. I'm not in England. I'm not talking to, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the Glazers. I'm not talking to Fabrizio right now about what's going on in the backroom staff, but 
the Everyone's back saying that Sir Alex that's like spearheading. Sir, Sir guy, Alex guy, is like spearheading, giving, yeah. Like, giving him like. No one invited him. He just he was at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's part of the board, so it's like. They're, yeah, he's screaming to give him another chance. He is. He is screaming, but like I, for me, it's like once you initiate contact with somebody else, and there's that is official. Hanging around another manager, a because it's you're gonna tarnish his his uh, legacy at the club, and b you're gonna hurt the club even more. In performances because the, the players are not going to believe the manager. The manager's not going to believe in himself if he has these three games to live up to. You ask anybody of that, that's a lot to ask for. And yeah, I hope he I hope he does well for the sake of the club, but like, is it long? Is that something that you want? If he wins three games, three out of three next time we go out, is that really what I want? Is like, oh, he's we're okay now. No, we still have to, a title to challenge for. Like that's not going to win us a trophy. So it's like, you're like a quarter through the really difficult spell that you're, I mean, you're, you're getting a lot of games off the, off the board, but you still have a lot of tough ones to go. No. So. Yeah. Do you want him to resign? Like, do you want him to leave like on his own terms? I think the club should have just been like a mutual consent where like they talk with him and they sat down with him and they should have done it this entire week before, before Spurs and just had someone else take charge and then bring Conte in after that. Cause I, my thing, like, you can't talk, you cannot release or have news release where Conte is in talks with United and then give Ole three games to, to um, decide if that's going to happen or not. And you mentioned that's legacy, crazy. which unless it's the fact that Con- Conte they, like, denied or he was like, I need time. No, he, Conte's fully on board. He was like, he was pretty, pretty sure he's fully, I'm pretty sure the news is that he's like, I don't want to take over a new team and then lose three matches. So I'll come in. (laughs) No, I I think I'll come in January. I I don't want to come in on Man City. I just think it's, I think it's just bad for the, it's bad for Ole. It's bad for the club. And it looked bad on the, it's bad for the players, the the manager and the club as a whole. So it's like, if you're going to make the decision, make the decision. Don't don't just leave it to three games and and hopefully we get three res- three results that are good and then we keep going on with Ole, who can lose the next three games yeah. because it's unstable. It's Definitely good. It's can't nice win. I think yeah, I think he has one. I don't think he actually has three. Well, yeah, three is like the most. No, no get. offense, but like a bad loss to Spurs, I would just be like, yeah, a loss do. to Spurs, I think he's out. I would just be even like, a draw might. Might be enough to give him the boot. Yeah, yeah we're not that bad. Yeah, I'd give him. I'd give him. What are they saying? They're calling this weekend El Sacico. <laughs> <laughs> whichever, whichever manager. I would loses, love that. Sacked. Imagine we draw and both of them just get the axe right after the game. <laughs> know, yeah. you, you, you and Andrew are just passionately hugging after the game as both. Yeah, managers is that get Sunday? Sacked. Really excited. It's Saturday, twelve thirty. Oh, oh my man. god, I'm gonna be drinking anyway, so I might as well just put the fucking Twitch stream on and watch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we uh, it, it'll be it'll be a big game coming up. But I mean, in terms of like the whole legacy thing, it, it would it's fun. It's nice to imagine a world where Ali does retain some sort of role. I feel bad club, for him. I honestly do. I really feel bad. Are for we him. are we like kind of past that point where if if they're if they have a new coach, he's not in a, any type of managerial role? No, I think Conte brings his own backroom staff. I think Carrick's out. I think. Um, I think what's his name McKenna is out. I think uh, a lot of those back, a lot of those um, assistant coaches are gone, and that's just honestly because that's con. Look, I told Jalen this morning. I told Connor also. Conte comes in, we oh, get um, we get a Mourinho, we get a serial winner, who will implement a system effectively for two seasons, and then things will fall. That's what's going to happen unless unless Manchester United are willing to un- to understand that and be like. We we know this will be a two season thing and not expect a long term thing. That's fine with me, but you just need someone. You need to have someone ready for when the shit hits the fan to come in and like take it from from where it is to a long term. Because what I want as a fan is a long term stability situation. Because you see that with Liverpool, like they have Klopp. Klopp came in and did the right things and got his got his uh, system implemented and now it's working out extremely well. Pep has done the same thing. Yeah, Pep came in, got the money. But like we but mentioned, you, you would need a pep over a Klopp, not not in necessarily playing style, but like like we like I said last week, United just yeah. need a jackass. They they don't they can't have a guy who's smiling or that's as good. A no, we've had we've had jackasses always. though. We've you had re- like, but a man manager. But we've had but we've had jackasses. We've had Mourinho. And we've they've had won Van though, and they've won. I know. Yeah, I think but it's gotten a little bit term. toxic at the end. But would you sacrifice a more toxic ending for actual hardware? And an actual ID, an actual tangible success, as opposed to what you've got in the past couple of years, which is well, we're headed in the right direction, that's for sure. Well, no, but yeah. Mourinho, but no, I was going to say, but like, where did Mourinho yeah, really get? Mourinho that? got like, you won a Europa he just tore, he just tore the club Mourinho, up, tore players up. Like he yeah, was, he, he got terrible. his trophies, but it was like, about to drive Pogba out. Like, yeah, it, it made was, it made it worse for us in the long term. Yeah, but but trope, Lingard, again, was that is that 
That's not better for the club. Worse than where you are right now. Like, yeah, that is. I think we're better. Off. We're way better off than where we were. Not winning. To, I, I don't know. I I think so, we're, this is just where we'll not quite like that's see no, but eye so, to eye. But I, I think that's I, I also do assuming that from. Conte can win a title. Like can win a but Premier League. He's the he asshole need, that I think he, they could really he need. He needs to win either a Premier League or a Champions League. He needs to win or an FA Cup. He needs to win the like biggest trophies to offer it can't be like oh he just comes in and gets a trophy that doesn't do anything for united that it doesn't so if conte came in the spurs and just like drove out harry kane and like sown would you have been happy if he won a title yeah yeah but what if what if the next season he's gone and then your club's in turmoil now you're talking to a tottenham fan you're talking you're talking to a tottenham fan things are different we're not used to glory you know trophy for someone who is now considered a really negative part of the club yeah i mean i would do that but it's case by case thing. I know Look, United's I'd, not exactly the same, but I'd rather take Conte now also, just because I'm not I wouldn't be the biggest fan, but I'd be like, okay, he's gonna win his trophy. But like you cannot deny what Ole has done for like for United. He's he's come in, he's fi- found stability. Edward's on the way out. Like we've brought in a director of some sort of director of football. Not saying it's all Ole, but it's Ole was the beginning of like, let's get this club back to how Sir Alex had it and let's get some more Let's get the fans more involved. Let's get that like family cohesion that the club has had and make the better. They've made the right sign. Manchester United have made the right signings. Apart from Ronaldo, that's the only person you can say like he wasn't the best in terms of like, why would you sign him? Because like, is it just like a buy to rush to beat out City? Like whatever. He's still important to the squad. But you look at who they've signed since Ole has been there. It's all the right players. You look who they signed when Mourinho was there. And none of those players have had successful careers other than Pogba. And Darmian. And yeah. <laughs> other <laughs> other <laughs> other than one is like the one that's like axing him in the back is Donny Van Der Beek. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's gonna happen. I don't think I don't think Donny Van Der Beek was a Ole buy. Yeah. I, I think it was a buy from It's the, almost impossible to believe that he was, right? Like uh, yeah, it based is based on what's happening. No, how I, could you no think it, that it was, was said at the time too. Like especially it was just like to appease people because they weren't buying. That was anything. all their buys that summer. It was yeah. no and Cavani worked out. Yeah, Cavani. Yeah, that was that was part Would of it. Did you buy him on deadline day? Yeah, but I mean, it worked out. Yeah, but so I think I think I think Ole has done a lot that people don't really understand or take credit for or appreciate him for, and it's it's unfortunate because I don't think he's done bad. I think he's just done. But he's taken them as probably as far as yes. Able so to this is where he needs to leave. But I don't think Conte is the yeah, perfect. I think Zidane is. I think Zidane is. He's composed. He's man manager. He works with his players. He's a ta- he's a genius when it comes to work. He's also a shit though, and also, I think that's the most important. Conte doesn't play United football. No, he doesn't. He, neither he, did, he, neither he, did Mourinho. He, yeah, but like, the thing is, like he would, like Conte would like tear the club up by its roots. Yeah, yeah. I think like, he would. They, that whole like history aspect that they have, so like, toxic that you, that you were saying with like Carrick and all them, like you wouldn't. Let's say ha- Juan Basaka. He's like, what the fuck. That's what no. I was saying. Like Juan Basaka is not a Conte player. He would, Conte would if, be like speaking yeah. Italian in the locker room. And like, Juan Basaka no would be Juan Basaka would literally be like he can't like beat like the dummy on a cross. <laughs> I think I think in the short term it's gonna work out with Conte if it does happen. I think long term it's gonna make it's gonna put us off worse than Mourinho did. If United did the smart thing, they would sign him for just a season. Yeah, they need yeah. a they need him that's what I said, they need to bring him in for like knowing season, like it's like it's gonna go to shit. But what they're gonna do is sign him to a three year deal and then sign him for this season yeah. and next season. It's yeah. gonna be like a three year old yeah, they'll give him two years because they say this isn't your full season. We haven't given you money to do your thing. <laughs> then they're gonna give him a second season and they're gonna buy like Victor Moses again and yeah. like and then, Ashraf Hakimi. Yeah. And then I mean, Hakimi's have, uh, sick, though. Yeah, yeah Ashley, Hakimi. Then he'll have the Williams. last half of the season where he just tears it to pieces. He just yeah. like, blows yeah. it up on the way. like, oh, I'm getting sacked anyways. Let me yeah. do it. Next, thing, the, next thing you know, you're left with oh, McTominay bro. and Fred and freaking... I'm Mc, telling you, Mc, Fred Mc, stays in that club until 2030, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, until yeah, the day someone sacks up and just doesn't play Fred, they're just like... It'll go down in history when Fred stops playing or leaves or whatever, like how much he was played at that club. Yeah, yeah. On top of like... Back to the performance, it was pathetic. Like Fred and McTominay were a god awful. Like, or I mean, I think Greenwood was one of the best players also on the pitch who got taken off eventually. It was just like, wow! Like you got to put a lot on the players there. Even like losing to Spurs, what was it five one? No, it was been six half, one. Six one wasn't half as miserable as that though. Oh no, no, no. I think that was like Cause this is a one sided like thrash. It's also Liverpool too. I like, mean, yeah, it was good as Spurs are. It's like, that's not, that's not the I want to say it's like rivalry. Cause I still think Man City Man U is a big rivalry right now, but like 
Liverpool and Man U is like the oldest one like is, ever. Yeah. It's like a like, derby. It's like a derby. The big, they're the biggest. Yeah, it's like the, the big, derby that's not a derby, but yeah. that's the biggest rivalry in English football. It's the biggest. It's the biggest and event. To get stamped out like that, like yeah. and they never. You guys never hit fourth gear, whatever you want to call it, fifth gear. It's uh, how many gears you get. <laughs> yeah, and they like, hit, and they had all. You guys went in seventh <laughs> gear. I thought you were gonna get the twelfth gear, but you never did. You stayed in tenth gear. Yeah. Yeah. How many gears are scoring crappy goals? You know. But yeah, overall. Shit day for United. Great day for Liverpool fans, and we'll see what happens on Sunday or Saturday when we play Spurs.